Good morning, children. As we were reading about the chapter called India's Foreign Policy. Now, under this chapter, today we'll be moving towards to China Indian War. Okay. It's a war between India and China. So, as we know very well, there was a very good relation between India and China before. Okay. Uh, they walked shoulder to shoulder, especially during the formation of NAM. Now, let's see what was the main causes, okay, for the hostility between these two countries. First, in the Sino Indian War, we will be moving towards to the issue of Tibet. Okay. Tibet issue. Now, so when I come to uh, just tell you about the relation between India and Tibet, okay, first of all, let us come to the point. Okay. India and Tibet. India and Tibet have really maintained a very good relations from very, very ancient time. From the very early time only when Buddhism started spreading to India, sorry, when Buddhism started spreading to Tibet, from that time onwards only, India and Tibet had a very good relation. It was during the British period, okay, the British government also tried to establish the trade relation, okay, to, the, to do the business uh, between uh, with Tibet, to open the markets in Tibet, okay. The British government at the initial stage also, they tried a lot to establish the trade relation, but they were not able to succeed. They failed it. But finally, at last, during the uh, uh, turn of Colonel, young husband, okay, Finally, during the time of Colonel Young Husband, he was able to, he was succeeded in establishing the trade relation with Tibet. Thereafter, when uh, India and Tibet, okay, had a, a trade relation, Tibet, Tibetans, they started, uh, they agreed to open uh, three trade markets to the British, okay. So, now, Tibet, Tibetans, they especially agreed to open the markets to the British. Now, at this time, in China, they had developed a state called Communist State. Try to understand. Now, we are coming to the point. Okay. It was during this time only, China had developed, uh, China was been converted into a Communist State. And under the leadership of Mao Zedong, okay, under the leadership of Mao Zedong, China wanted to claim her right of suzerainty over Tibet. Okay, so under the leadership of Mao Zedong, now she wanted to uh, specially claim her power or to conquer over Tibet. So finally, in the year 1959, China successfully uh, overran and occupied Tibet. So, see, China had already made up their mind that they will occupy Tibet. Because they wanted to claim her uh, right of suzerainty over Tibet. So accordingly only, Finally, China occupied Tibet in the year 1959. Now, let's see. The scenario of the scenario of Tibet and China, how it was been looked upon by the Indian government. During that time, Prime Minister of India was Jawaharlal Nehru. Let's see. How he acted, how he reacted in this, uh, uh, this uh, incident. Okay. Nehru's government remained passive spectator. Now, Nehru's government did not do anything, neither, okay, supported nor opposed the Indian government during that time, just was a spectator, just looking uh, what was going on, okay, in uh, Tibet, okay. So, it was during that time, now as I've told you, Tibet was been completely occupied by China in 1959. During this time, the religious leader Dalai Lama, hope you know him very well, and the thousands of Tibetan refusers, they wanted an asylum in India. Okay, they came and they uh, asked the Indian government a uh, help to give them the shelter. Where well, Nehru's government readily gave, say. Nehru government readily agreed to give the shelter to the Tibetan refugees as well as the religious leader Dalai Lama. Now, this act of Indian government, this act of Indian government was being looked upon as an unfriendly act by China. Is it clear? This act of when Nehru agreed to give a shelter 
to the refugees, the Tibetan refugees, as well as the leader, uh, religious leaders, Dalai Lama. This act of India was looked upon as an unfriendly act by China. So, see, China made up her mind to give an aggressive design against India now. Now, China clearly made up her mind to give an aggressive uh, action against India. So, finally, China forcibly occupied the Indian territories of Longzhu, that is in the northeastern frontier areas, and the Ladakh in the Himalayan region in 1959. So, finally, China did not like okay, uh, the uh, action taken by Nehru government. Okay, China did not like that Indian government is giving shelter to the Tibetans, refugees, as well as Dalai Lama. Because of this only, China attacked and occupied some of the Indian territories. The name of the territories which was, attacked, which was occupied by China in 1959 were Longzhu, that is in the northeastern frontier area, and Ladakh, that is in the Himalayan region. Thereafter, three years later, in the year 1962, three years later, China again launched an aggressive attack especially on northern and eastern frontiers of India. In the northern border and the eastern border of India, in this area, China completely gave an aggressive attack in the year 1962. Now, let us come to the main point. What was the main cause of the war? The main cause of this war was a dispute which was going over the sovereignty of the widely separate Aksai Chin and Arunachal Pradesh border region. So that was the main cause for the war between India and China. To claim the sovereignty over the separated Aksai Chin and Arunachal Pradesh. Now Aksai Chin, India claimed Aksai Chin as a part of Kashmir. India was saying that Akshay Chin, it is a part of Kashmir, whereas China said, no, Akshay Chin is a part of Xinjiang. It is one of the places of China. Okay, got it. So, in one hand side, India is saying that Akshay Chin is a part of India. In the other hand side, China is saying, no, Akshay Chin is a part of China. That was the main cause for the dispute. Is it clear? Now, as you know, well, Akshay Chin contains an important road link. See. There is one very, very important uh, road, okay, which has been constructed in Aksai Chin, which connect most of the Chinese regions of Tibet and Xinjiang. These two places, most of the important uh, regions of China, uh, Chinese regions of Tibet and the Xinjiang, uh, Xinjiang was being well connected by the road which was being constructed in Aksai Chin. So this construction of road was one, one of the main cause of the conflict. China constructed the road in Aksai Chin, okay. China constructed the road in Aksai Chin. That construction of this road was one of the most important causes for the war between India and China. Now, see, at that time, in the year 1962, try to understand, my dear children, Indian army was not at all prepared for such an attack. Indian army didn't ever thought that... All of a sudden, the Chinese army will attack on them because Indian army considered China as a friendly power. See, see, try to understand here. Indian army really considered China as a friendly power, so there was no any chance, there was no any hope that any moment China will attack uh, India. So that is the reason why Indian army was not at all prepared. On the northeastern front, the Indian army could offer no resistance and the Chinese advanced within striking distance of Assam. See, in the north northeastern border of India, Indian army was not able to resist. Indian army was not able to control the Chinese army. So that is the reason why very soon Chinese, they reached towards to a striking distance of Assam. Very close to Assam, Chinese army. Now this was a great humiliation for India. This was a great humiliation for India, try to understand, because Indian, India had never thought all of a sudden, okay, suddenly China will attack India. So it was a great humiliation, okay, uh, and a greater one was dealt her by China when she unilaterally declared in 1963 a ceasefire. In 1962, in 1962, India, China attacked India, is it clear? So that was a great humiliation. For India, and another great humiliation was that again in the 1963 alone, China declared ceasefire. China declared ceasefire means to stop war. See, without see, without having an agreement, without having a discussion with another country, they came and attacked that country, 
and without coming to the notice of that country, they stopped the war. This was a great humiliation. China finally stopped fighting and remained in occupation of South Indian territory as he thought it failed. Finally, China, China completely stopped the war. And, but she continued to occupy such Indian territories which she thought that it was fit for them to occupy. She continued to occupy the Indian territory. China continued, though they stopped fighting, but China continued to occupy some of the Indian territories. This was a great disillusionment for Nehru. Nehru was been very, very dissatisfied because in China has started showing an unfriendly policy. Is it clear? Because see you, in the very, I've already told you before only, India was following a very friendly policy towards to China. See, India had a very good relation with China. India had a very friendly relation with China. And India had never thought that all of the choice are in China may, may, may attack India. So that really disappointed Jawaharlal Nehru. Now let us see the result of Sino-Indian War. According to China's official military history, the war achieved China's policy of securing borders in the western sector. China now retained de facto control of the outside chain. After the war, India abandoned the forward policy and the de facto borders established on the line of LAC, we call it, that is the line of actual control. See, according to the official military history given by China, they said that they had achieved a great the war achieved China's policy of securing borders. That means because of this war, they were able to secure some of the borders in the western sector. And now, Aksai Chin came completely under the full control of China. China retained the complete power over Aksai Chin. Thereafter the war, India completely stopped the forward policy. Okay, completely stop whatever the relation we had, India had uh, with China before, that was completely uh, closed down and the de facto border established along the line of actual control. Thereafter, a line was been drawn which was known as the line of actual con control. That means in one hand side, India is not able to cross that uh, line of actual control and China is also not able to, not allowed to cross the line of actual control. That was the result. The aftermath of war saw the sweeping changes in Indian military system to prepare it for similar conflicts in future. See, this war, the war which uh, the China, when China attacked India, this really gave a great lesson to the Indian army. This really gave a great lesson to Indian army. Now, Indian military system was completely prepared that prepared for the same type of conflicts in future. See, same type of war, same type of attack may be made in future for that purpose. Now, Indian military system was been completely changed and now Indian military was always ready to face that side of that sort of conflicts. During that time, Krishna Menon, Krishna Menon was the defense minister. He blamed for the unpreparedness of the army. See, defense minister, Krishna Menon, See, it was his responsibility, it was his responsibility to know, okay, whether there are, his army was prepared or not. But what he did, he completely blamed that the Indian army was not prepared. Because of the unpreparedness of the army, China attacked India. So this was an allegation given by the defense minister, Krishna, Krishna Menon. So finally, he himself resigned from his post to allow someone who might modernize India's military system. He said that, yes, the our army was not prepared, okay, our army was not prepared, so he took up the responsibility, he resigned from the post of defense minister and he asked someone who can modernize the Indian military system to return in that post. Sensing the weakness of the Indian army, Pakistan, a close ally of China, became a policy of provocation against India by infiltrating in Jammu and Kashmir, ultimately this led to second Indo-Pak war in 1965. See, now, in the other hand side, okay, Pakistan what? Pakistan thought they came to know the weakness of Indian Army. Indian Army, Indian Army, the Army of India was very weak now because China attacked. So, keeping that point in the view, Pakistan, who was the close ally of China, who was a very, very close friendly relation with China, still today also, still today also, Pakistan had a very good relation with China. Now, Pakistan started provocating against India. Pakistan also started stating that Jammu and Kashmir belongs to Pakistan. This is our area. Kashmir is our area. So we will take it. 
So because of this, finally, the Second Indo-War, Second uh, Indo-Pak War was been uh, outbroke in the year 1965. Just for that only. Okay. Now Pakistan saw the weakness of the Indian Army. So taking the advantage of that, they also went against India, stating that Jammu and Kashmir belongs to Pakistan. Because of this, finally, uh, the Second indo pak War broke out in the year 1965. Soon after the end of the war, the Indian government passed the Defense of India Act in December 1962. The act allowed the arrest of any person simply having Chinese surname, drop of Chinese blood or Chinese spouse. Thousands of Chinese Indians were thus forcibly deported to live in India. See, finally, <clears throat> the war ended. After the end of the war, the final result was that Indian government passed one act. Try to understand my dear children. Indian government passed one act which is known as the Defense of India Act and it was passed in December 1962. Defense of India Act passed in December 1962. This act completely allowed to arrest any person having Chinese surname. See, any person whose surname is Chinese, they will be arrested. According to this act, see, the Defense of India Act, the Defense of India Act, December 1962, this act completely gave a full power to arrest any person who have the surname, Chinese surname, who have the Chinese blood, who have a Chinese spouse. Chinese spouse means Chinese husband or wife. Is that clear? Got it? So it was during that time, thousands of Chinese Indians, okay, Chinese Indian whose surname was Chinese, who had a Chinese blood, whose spouse, either husband or wife was Chinese, they were forcibly asked to leave India. So this act gave this power, it allowed to arrest any person whose surname was Chinese. Is it clear? Okay, my dear children, so this is all about the Sino-Indian War. Okay, so uh, today I had completed the chapter India's foreign policy. Now in our next class, we will start with the world history. So today I'll be ending up my class out here. Thank you very much.